Irish poet Wisława Szymborska once wrote, we only know ourselves to the extent that we have been tested. How many of you feel life has tested you? How many of you feel that those tough experiences in this painful past made you actually better rather than bitter? Excellent. Have a, keep your hands up. Have a look around. Maybe smile at the people who are having their hands up. Congratulations and welcome to humanity. <laughs> Ernest Hemingway once said, life breaks everyone and many are strong in the broken places. You see, that capacity of the human heart are turning struggle into strength and making broken beautiful is something we need now more than ever. Why is that? Well, buckle up. The theory of punctuated equilibrium says that evolution does not happen in a linear way. There are periods where nothing happens at all, and then there are periods where everything happens all at once. And the markers of those punctuated equilibrium times where everything happens all at once is an event, environmental uncertainty, mass disruption, and breakdown of systems. Sounds familiar? Now, this is also the time when speciation and exponentiation happens. And the last time this happened was about 600 million years ago during the Cambrian age. And this is a time where actually multi-cell organisms gain sight. They start seeing, they start seeing light, perceiving light. And this actually led to amazing speciation, they call it the expl Cambrian explosion, in which many species that we know today got formed and developed. Now this is happening again. We are gaining a new sense, and that new sense is data. Data is our new sight. You see, for the first time, we get to see and experience things we have never seen and never experienced before. We get to see the inner workings of our brain, of our body. We get to see the inner workings of democracies and societies. We get to see this beautiful planet called Earth grow, live, change, and get destroyed. We get to see the faraway planets like Mars and landing their life. And of course, who can forget, we got to see life how COVID was spreading. Now, what does it mean to us humans? Homo sapiens sapiens, as species, means the wise one. Now, that is sometimes questionable, but we actually evolved, and we won the race against many other hominids, not because of our strength, and not because of our speed, how we run, and not because of our amazing eyesight, because we actually, we're not good at that. We actually have an amazing capacity that absolutely uniquely human, and they include insight, imagination, and inspiration. You see, we can look across the world and collect the data, get aware, and then go inside our mind, think, ponder, connect the dots, and actually get an insight of what we need to do next. We can look beyond the horizon, beyond of what exists, and imagine futures that don't exist just yet. Not only that, we can actually, with our mind's eye, imagine worlds that are better. And then we can touch the hearts and minds, or minds and hearts of others, and make them collaborate with each other, with strangers, to make those futures a reality. Now, what are we going to do with this new sight, with this new awareness? What insights are we going to get? What imagination are we going to use? And what inspiration are we going to get to collaborate with others? If this is both scary and exciting, you're at the right place. You know, human beings are more fragile and more resilient than what we think. Now, we're more resilient because actually, we got this. Resilience is in our genes. Each one of us has an ancestor who survived wars, genocides, droughts, floods, pandemics, fires, tsunamis, you name it. And so resilience is in our DNA. We're part of the big chain of life. But we're also way more fragile than what we think, and coronavirus has shown that to us. Coronavirus was the perfect storm for the human psyche. It was three huge layers that got layered up on top of each other, creating the perfect storm and something that many people call collective trauma right now. We got acute and prolonged stress, we got uncertainty, and we got loss. And when there is loss, there is also grief. And so many of us are still in the cycle of grieving. 
The silver lining in this is that the final piece of the cycle of grief is actually finding a meaning. And so there's many people, many of us, have actually found new meaning. We grew what we went through. They found new meaning, new motivation, and growth in life. And in psychology, we call it post-traumatic growth. There were three commonalities that those people that grew what they went through had. The first one is primal belief that the world is actually a good place. The second one is that we identify, we are part of humanity. And the third one is belief that the future, what the future has to bring, is a good thing, open us to the future. And so I believe those three mindsets will be the mindsets that will take us through the hump of the punctuated equilibrium and will help us upgrade as humanity. Now, how is this upgrade going? You see, when we look around the world, it seems a lot of things are breaking down, that the world and systems are breaking down. What's actually happening is we're experiencing a collective breakthrough. The first breakthrough has to do with our bodies. It turns out that, yes, our immune system is inside our bodies, but it's not only encapsulated inside our bodies. It turns out that quality of our relationships affects quality of our life, as Esther Perel says but it also directly affects our happiness, as probably the longest and biggest research on happiness shows that quality of relationships, number one contributed to your happiness, but it also directly affects your health and affects your immune system. In other words, what we learned through COVID is that others are our distributed immune system. Not only that, not only that we are actually connected through technology and it creates this collective nervous system and so COVID was, for many of us, the first time when we actually not only saw but felt that we're not, al not alone in our mental health struggles, that we're not the only one with broken brain, and we're not the only one with COVID fatigue. COVID and the lockdown was a collective me too when it comes to mental health. And not only that, what COVID has showed us that we're actually deeply embedded in the web of interbeing we look around and we look at ourselves and we feel burned out. And we look around the world and we see the world burning. We feel frustrated and we look around the world and we see conflict. We want certainty and we want to be right. And we look around the world and we see the world radicalizing and polarizing. And so, what now? If this feels like too much, too fast, if your nervous system is a bit out of whack because it's all this happening all at the same time, well, I invite you to take a deep breath in. And a deep breath out. Okay. You just calm down your nervous system. And so, in a complex world, sometimes simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. And so, as a psychologist, I have three simple yet not easy steps for us to move forward. First, if your nervous system is out of whack, calm the teet, 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 teet down. Get your system back to center and calm. This is by far the most advi important advice I can give you. You see, when your nervous system gets overwhelmed by too much and too fast, it goes into one of two states. Chaos, panic, and overwhelm, some of us. Others go into rigidity, denial, and numbness, who feel nothing, do nothing. This is how things should be. This is the space where we actually cannot grow. This is the space of closeness. This is the space of rigidity. You see, human system and human nervous system can only be in two states. States of defensiveness, of state of learning. When you go into chaos or you go into rigidity, you go into the denial. And so, Use all the tools in your resilience toolbox, and there are many, 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 to bring yourself back to calm and center, because this is this place where you grow, where you learn, ultimately where you heal. This is the space of, from which you have the ability to have flexibility of response. In psychology, we call it widening the window. Open up the window so those small things don't get you spinning out, either upside or downside. And then stay open. Stay open to what the future brings. Open your eyes, do not shut that window, and take action, do something. Now, if you don't know where to start, there are three good places to start. Now, if you're still struggling and your heart is still broken, I invite you to take advice from Princess Layla from the Star Wars, who said, 
Take your broken heart, make it into art. Now, if you feel you're top of the world and you got this, take advice from me. Do something that's both scary and exciting. If it's both scary and exciting, it's definitely worth it. And then if you're somewhere in the middle, take advice from my grandma who said, make one thing that makes you proud. Now, we hurt and we heal in relationships. And so maybe there's one thing to do that will make you proud is to say, thank you, I'm sorry, or I love you. And remember, research shows that your courage, your compassion, and your curiosity, they're contagious. And so, be a super spreader. Coronavirus, gossip, fake news have shown us how quickly and widely things can spread. You see, in this interconnected, exponential world, we actually can use technology. We can use the machine intelligence, the raw processing power that machines have to actually spread the message and be a super spreader. Machine intelligence can support us in harnessing what we do the best, having insights about what to do, imagining worlds that don't exist just yet, and then inspiring the hearts and minds of others to actually build that better world. Your perspective matters. We actually need it. Because back in the day, used to be selected leaders that could imagine, inspire, and coordinate efforts. Those days, leadership is global. And so, to end up, I want to repeat the Polish poem. We only know ourselves to the extent that we have been tested. If you walk around the world, bruised and scarred by how your life has unfolded, please remember that those are the signs that you have lived, that you have loved, that you are learning, and that you've given it a good go. Make sure to show it to us. Make sure to wear it proudly. You are absolutely an inspiration because we've got this humanity. Thank you.